Yeah. Okay. So welcome everybody to 12th uh, week of Uchikan seminars. Today we have Ersan Genj uh, from Jogielion University uh, in Poland. And he's going to talk us talk talk with us about Udrich trichotomy on Dalpezzo surfaces. Okay, thank you, Edgar. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much for the opportunity for the uh, this talk. <clears throat> Uh, this is a talk uh, based on a joint work with Emre and the Joshkun. And let me start. <clears throat> uh, the talk will be basically in uh, three sections. In first, I will uh, talk about the motivation. Uh, I will try to explain the problem. In the second part, I will give basic definitions and uh, I will give theorem of Bondal because these basic definition will be uh, in two sets and then this Bondal theorem will uh, combine these two uh, <clears throat> uh, approach. And in the third part, I will mention the main theorem and I will give uh, the steps of the proof. And <clears throat> so let me start with the motivation. And if you have a vector bundle on uh, P1, and I think uh, we know the uh, this uh, famous known result. Uh, if you have a vector bundle, uh, uh, rank R vector bundle on P1, we know that it always uh, splits. I mean, this vector bundle can be written as direct sum of uh, line bundles, of R line bundles. And this is the result of growth ending and it's well known and due to these results, it is uh, very natural to ask, uh, do we have a similar uh, result on higher dimension instead of P1, Pn, and bigger than one? So <clears throat> this is our question. What about vector bundles on Pn if n is bigger than one? And do we have similar splitting results? Uh, the answer is no but we have very nice uh, characterization for splitting bundles on PN uh, due to Halox. Uh, a vector bundle on PN splits if and only if uh, all middle cohomologies of all twist of uh, vector bundle is zero. <clears throat> if this is the case, uh, the bundle is direct sum of line bundles. And as you see, it is if and only if uh, result. And uh, now due to Harrock's results and uh, in the light of this uh, theorem, it is uh, natural to look at this type of bundles. I mean bundles uh, which has uh, vanishing middle cohomologies of with all twists. Okay, because somehow they are simple bundles at least on PN as you see on PN such bundle splits. But the question on the other varieties, can we uh, generalize this definition in this sense and can we analyze these bundles on other varieties? So we can give this definition. We will call a vector bundle on a projective variety as ACM. If all middle cohomologies uh, with uh, twist vanishes. And middle cohomologies means the cohomology from one to dimension minus one. And this means e to the t means here e tensor t times uh, o one. Yeah. <clears throat> Sean, sorry, I have a question. Yes. Uh, splits means uh, here. Di direct sum of line bundles. It is isomorphic. Line bundles, not yeah. higher ranks, right? No. Line bundles, OK. okay. Uh, <clears throat> For high rank in general, it is called as decomposable. Decomposable. Yes, decomposable or decomposable. Okay, this is the definition. And after this definition, uh, there is a, a nice uh, result of uh, Ulrich. It's a well-known result. It is, if I'm not wrong, it is uh, late uh, 70s or 80. I don't remember the exact time. Uh, Ulrich, give this theorem, this result says that uh, if you have a 
uh, ACM bundle. And if you look at the uh, maximal coin Macaulay, uh, uh, maximally generated uh, uh, MCM, I, I don't remember the, uh, anyway, if you look at A0 X E to the T for all T, okay, this is a graded uh, module. And if you look at the minimal number of these generators, if E is ACM, this number is the generators, the number of generators is bounded above by degree of variety times rank of E. Okay, this is for N ACM bundle. And uh, this is the result of URI. And <clears throat> after this, uh, after this observation, now we can define URI bundles. And let me define. And naturally, the definition is something like this. An ACM vector bundle is called URI if this number, ME, the minimal number of generators, attains the possible maximum number. Due to theorem, it is degree X times rank of E. Yeah. This is the definition of URI. As you see, it is very uh, competitive algebra definition in the sense of competitive algebra. But thanks to Eisenbach, Schreier, and Weyman, they gave more geometric characterization of such bundles. Okay. Let's, uh, we have a vector bundle of rank R on a smooth variety X of dimension K. Okay. It is polarized, embedded by O1. Okay. Then the followings are equivalent. E is Uri if uh, it is push forward is uh, have such resolution as you see maps are linear and we know the coefficients and also we have uh, another characterization in terms of uh, cohomologies uh, all cohomologies uh, of e twisted by minus i i change from one to dimension of variety is zero okay uh, you can use one of these definitions in fact uh, there are uh, more of them, uh, there are other characterization, but we will use these ones. So I will not give uh, details of uh, the definition. And uh, such bundles are, uh, have very nice uh, properties. For example, uh, on hypersurfaces, existence of uh, rank one or rank two Ulrich bundles directly uh, related to uh, your hypersurface being Determinantal or Fafian. Or also, it is another uh, nice uh, result about the existence of such bundles uh, is that if your variety uh, supports such bundles, Uri bundles, then cone of cohomology table of your variety is exactly the same with cone of uh, cohomology table of vector bundles uh, on PK. And also there are other uh, nice properties of these bundles. And because of this reason, uh, algebraic geometers have an interest on such bundles. And other than that uh, nice properties, in the language of vector bundles, they are very nice bundles because they have very nice properties. For example, uh, they are semi-stable. Uh, in fact, both slope and uh, is again semi-stable. Also, they are globally generated. And maybe uh, the extension of two Ulrich bundles is again uh, Ulrich bundles. And also, since it is, they are always semi-stable, they have automatically Jordan Holder uh, factor, uh, filtration. Uh, but add to this, these Jordan Holder filtrations has very nice properties. And, and there are lots of nice properties. And so, uh, but in this uh, area of uh, vector bundles, uh, after this definition and characterization, there are two main problems <clears throat> concerning all the bundles. Let me state them. The first one is existence problem because uh, Eisenbach, Schreier, and Weyman in their paper in 2000, uh, they gave characterization. Also, they conjectured that any projective variety admits an Uri bundle. Unfortunately, this conjecture uh, 
have not been sold in positive way or negative way. We don't have any uh, counter example to this conjecture. And also we don't have any general uh, existence result. We know uh, the existence on hypersurfaces and on curves in, with some restrictions and on, for example, funnel trifold index, uh, even index and, and some more. Uh, I mean, there are partial results, but in general, in, even uh, in surface case, we have no general uh, existence result. And also we don't have any counter examples. I mean, we don't know any variety which does not support Ulrich bundle for any link. We don't know such a result. And the other problem- uh, And the question is, sorry. Yeah. Uh, if a variety admits uh, Ulrich bundle, then uh, does it imply some nice properties? I mean, what is the importance of, uh, I mean, for a variety admitting uh, Uri founder. It is related to chop form. Uh, I cannot now uh, explain in details, but mm -hmm. other than, as I told you, it is also, it somehow uh, measures the complexity of your variety in the mm -hmm. sense of cohomology table, as I say, and mm -hmm. something li like this. And also there, as I told you, there is a conjecture of Eisenbach and Schreier says, uh, all varieties have this one. So because of this reason, there is an interest of uh, people uh, looking at these bundles. <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay. Another question? Okay, uh, the second main problem is classification of varieties with respect to families of Uri bundles that they support. Okay, maybe we don't know uh, how to solve the conjecture, but question, can we, classify varieties uh, with respect to uh, families of Ulrich bundles that they support. It sounds somehow strange because as I told you, we don't know uh, uh, the existence conjecture, but can we at least uh, divide uh, varieties into the sets with respect to the supporting such bundles? And how can we do that? in the sense of this definition. We can give such definitions mimicking from quiver representations. Okay, first let me give the definition. Uh, we have a projective variety and we will call this variety is finite Uri representation type if there are only finite number of in decomposable Uri bundles on X up to isomorphism. In decomposable is important because we know that uh, direct sum of two Uri bundles is again Uri bundles. So there is no interesting uh, in, interesting part there. So we will uh, we want to consider indecomposable ones. Okay. If you have finite to many, we will call X is finite type. And we will call X is tame type if either it has an infinite discrete set of indecomposable Uri bundles, up to isomorphism again or the families of non-isomorphic in decomposable Uri bundles of any given rank form a finite number of families of dimension at most dimension of your variety. And the last one is wild. And in that case, we will call X is wild if there exists families of in decomposable non-isomorphic with arbitrary large dimension. Okay, now this is a definition. And the question is exactly the main question in the sense of this definition is the following. Is the trichotomy exhausted? I mean, when you take a variety, projectivized variety, that this variety fit into one of these sets. Okay, this is the problem. Maybe there is some variety is none of these ones, not finite, not tame, not wild. For example, there are in decomposable bundles, uh, but the dimension of families is somehow bounded uh, bigger than dimension X. Okay, something like this. Question, is this definition exhaustive? Okay. <clears throat> so conjecture, 
since we gave this definition, we say that this trichotomy holds for every project of variety. Okay. But uh, before continue, you have to be careful with this definition. Uh, in fact, the definition of Ulrich bundles. Note that the existence of Ulrich bundles depends on the polarization. Okay. Uh, for example, if you look, consider P2, okay, with H, we know the result of Harox that the only Uri bundle is sum of uh, structure sheets. Okay, nothing more because they are ACM and we know that on PN ACM bundles are sum of line bundles. In the, again, P2, but if you change the polarization, I mean, if you change the embedding, instead of H to 2H, now there exists unique rank two URI bundle and the higher rank bundles are all of them isomorphic to uh, some of uh, this unique rank two URI bundles, in this case, tangent bundles. Okay, which means that in the sense of definition, this is URI finite because we are considering in decomposable ones. And the only in decomposable one is in this case, tangent bundle, okay, for the uh, polarization 2H. If you change polarization again, now look at DH, D is bigger than two, then now that exists infinite family, okay. We showed this uh, result in uh, another paper with Emre and also uh, with the paper of Rosa and uh, Costa. We showed, we know this result. If D is bigger than two, uh, that exists infinite family of URIF bundles, which means that in this case, URIF wise. As you see, the variety is same, but when you change, change the uh, embedding polarization, the uh, behavior completely changed from finite to uh, wild case. So polarization is important here, okay? Now, after this motivation, now let me continue with the second part. Okay, I will give basic definitions and then I will state theorem of Bondal. Okay, <clears throat> any question up to now? Okay, so I will continue. The first definition is the definition of funnel variety because in the uh, title you saw the del peso, so we need to define del peso. Uh, a smooth projective variety is called Fano variety if it is anti-canonical divisor is ample. In the surface case, uh, Fano means del peso surface. I mean, X is del peso if it is Fano variety of dimension two. And in dimension two case, the classification is complete. There are uh, all del peso surfaces are uh, completely classified. They are P2, smooth quadric in P3 and XD, which are blob of P2 at D points, and D can be one to eight. Okay, so we have 10 class, 10 del peso surfaces. But in our problem, in fact, we have infinitely many varieties because uh, of the remark. If you change the polarization, the uh, behavior changes. Okay. <clears throat> Now, after this definition, the other definition is about quivers. Okay, quiver is simply a directed graph, which means a quiver is a quadruple, uh, which is Q0, Q1, S, and T, where Q0 and Q1 are sets whose elements are vertices and arrows respectively. And S and T are for maps from Q1 to Q0 that sends each arrow to its source and target respectively. A simple example is a directed graph with two uh, vertex and two <clears throat> arrows, okay? As you see, vertices are uh, one and two and arrows are alpha and beta, okay? This so one can we? Also think the quiver as a bipartite graph. Uh, mm. the or it's more than that. It's directed graph. I think bi bipartite. Yeah, also directed. Yeah. Yeah, it's bi bipartite because it's a uh, special case. But in this case, we have no uh, restrictions. Something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Another question? <clears throat> okay. And if you have a quiver, then you can talk about their representations. A representation of a quiver, a representation V, uh, is a set of finite dimensional vector spaces for each vertex uh, in Q0, and also linear maps for every arrow, okay? And linear maps uh, from Vi to Vj, which are vector spaces assigned to each vertices, okay? And if you have such uh, vector spaces and maps, then it is called representation of your quiver. And your representation is called trivial if all vector spaces uh, are zero. And in this case, we just write uh, V is zero. And also <clears throat> we can uh, define morphisms between two representations on a given quiver. Fix your quiver Q and given two representation V and W, we can define a morphism from V to W as a collection of linear maps from VI to WI. VI and WI are vector spaces at the vertex I for each representation. And for each vertex, we define a linear maps. And also for each arrow, this diagram should commute. If this is the case, we call this morphism phi from V to W, okay? This is the definition of morphism uh, of representation, okay? Uh, in our talk, we will consider finite and acyclic quivers. Finite means we have finitely many vertex and arrows, and acyclic means we have no uh, loops, okay? <clears throat> Loops means arrows uh, with have same target and source, okay? <clears throat> and top Are of you integers, cycles, uh, Cycle, no, I mean, what do you mean cycle? Uh, here, cycle means the loop uh, with same target and uh, uh, source. Okay, okay. Uh, in the sense of graph, we, we can have loops, but loop is different here. Okay. So, so your Q0 and Q1 are non-empty sets. No, what do you mean? Um, no, no. It, meaning like you always have a vertex, at least one vertex. Yes, uh, but more than that, we don't want the, the uh, arrows starting and finishing at the same point. Sure, I, I think Özgür's cycle is the case where you don't, you have no no vertex, um, but you're not. It's not allowed here. It seems like you always have a vertex, and if you have more than one vertex, you have a path between them, directed path. Yes, we will uh, we, we will consider connected, but I have no something. Okay. Okay. And the tuple of integers dv which is the dimension of uh, vector spaces corresponds to uh, dimension of VI. Okay. <clears throat> Remember that in the representation, uh, we have uh, vector spaces to each uh, vertex, uh, ordered vertex. If we look at the dimension uh, of these ones and this ordered uh, uh, set, ordered number uh, of integers, okay, we will call this one dimension vector corresponds to uh, this representation. And also in this category, you can straightforwardly define some monomorphism, epimorphism and et cetera. So we will have a Belling category. We are in safe zone, okay? <clears throat> so another definition which we use in our uh, theorem is the Euler characteristic. If we are given two representation of a given quiver, V and W, then we define Euler characteristic of V, W as home V, W minus X1 V, W. And nothing more because uh, someone can show that X 
two and higher x vanishes always. So this is the definition of Euler characteristic. And another definition is Euler form, which is we have two dimension vector uh, for a quiver, which means we have two representations with dimension vectors alpha and beta. Then Euler form defined uh, like following. We will look at this sum over all vertices and we will look at the alpha bi for each vertex minus for each arrow, we have alpha uh, source of A and beta target of A. If you remember the map source of A and uh, target of A. Uh, That's one. Sorry, I have a question. So, given two quivers and their representations, so we define other characteristics. So no, we have only one quiver. We have two representations. We fix uh -huh. quiver. We oh, quiver okay. and representations change. Okay. 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 For example, let's see the meaning of these definitions. We have a quiver K3 which is a quiver with uh, two vertex and three arrows. Okay. And if you have two representation, V and W with dimension vectors, uh, D and D bar. And dimension vector means we need two uh, integer, which represents the dimensions of vector spaces, which we assigned to each vertices, okay. D1, D2, D1 bar, D2 bar. Then what is the Euler form of VW is the following. Remember the definition for each vertices, we need to look at the uh, sum of multiplications of uh, <coughs> entries. So we have D1 times D1 bar plus D2 times D2 bar and then minus as you see, for each arrow, now we have three arrow. As you see, for the first arrow, it goes to from one to two. Because of this reason, we need to we have d1 times d2 bar. But the other arrows have same uh, behavior. They goes from one to two. So we have minus three d1 times d2 bar. Okay. So this is the Euler form of Vw. That clear on this example? I think yes. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Now we have lemma. Uh, if you have two representation on your quiver, then Euler characteristic, in fact, is the Euler <clears throat> form of this two-dimension vector corresponding with, to these uh, representations. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Nice. Now let's stop here for the properties of quivers and definitions. Uh, a a uh, quick yeah. question again. Uh, Euler characteristic, uh, what does it represent in terms of, I mean, uh, is there any information about the graph quivers in this Euler characteristic? Uh, by definition, it is home minus x1. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, you, I mean, do you, do you mean any information about the graph? I mean, the quiver, uh, any more information uh, about that graph? Co do you mean combinatorially or? Yeah, combinatorial, sorry. Uh, pop, pop, pop. I'm not sure it is, uh, it's something deep. I. I mm -hmm. I cannot answer this part, uh, so. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now let me uh, give definition in the second set, second uh, area. <clears throat> Let's, we have a smooth projective variety of dimension n. Then we take a shift, coherent shift on X and we call this shift is exceptional if homomorphism to F to itself is C and higher X from uh, itself to itself is zero. Okay. If this is the case, this coherent shift 
on X is called exceptional. Yeah. And if we have an ordered collection of coherent sheep on X, uh, it is called exceptional collection. If each sheep is exceptional, which I gave the definition in the first item. And furthermore, Xi of Fk and Fj zero for all i and k bigger than j, which means that when you go from right to left, there are no x. Okay. If you have an ordered collection of exceptional sheaves with these additional uh, properties, we call this collection as exceptional collection. Okay. Item three, <clears throat> we call this exceptional collection, which is defined in item two. We call it a strong exceptional collection. If in addition, we have no X from left to right, okay, for higher X, <clears throat> which means when you go from uh, left to right, okay, if you look at the higher X, which means I bigger than or equal to one, it should vanish. Yeah. But it is allowed to home from left to right. And lastly, if you have an ordered collection, and we call this a full exceptional collection, if it is an exceptional collection, okay, which I define in item two, and more, it generates bounded category of X, okay db of x <clears throat> okay as an example take the, your variety as pn and then this uh, ordered uh, collection of uh, coherence shifts in our case line bundles is a full strong exceptional collection okay full part is hard part okay for this we need to uh, give lots of detail about dbx, but it is easy to check that this is an exceptional collection because we need to only check some uh, set of x and in uh, line bundle cases, we know this, this is isomorphic to some cohomologies. And also it is easy to check strongness. Okay, if you check in the sense of this definition, you will see that this is a full strong exceptional collection on PN. Now we have another definition. If you have a full exceptional collection on your uh, variety, then we have another collection which is called left dual collection of given collection. If you satisfy some extension conditions, as you see, okay. And in fact, to get this collection from C, there is a way, okay, which are called uh, right mutations in bounded category. But as I said, it is not our uh, duty to define uh, uh, in this talk. So I will just give the definition, but since we know the uniqueness of left dual collection, if you can find such a collection such why in this extension condition, which means that you found your dual collection, okay? If you turn back our the, uh, former example, in former example, we gave, uh, remember, for PN, we gave full strong exceptional collection. So we have for P2, O, O1 and O2. And in fact, when you shift all uh, elements in uh, exceptional collection with the same line bundle, Still, you have full exceptional collection. Okay, so I twist them uh, with d minus three, and I have a full exceptional collection. Okay, and for this full exceptional collection, the left dual is the collection of O d minus one tangent bundle twisted by d minus two and O d. By the way, d is any integer. Okay, fixed integer. And if you want, you can check X condition and you can see that uh, this C, uh, left, uh, that's why the definition of left deal collection, okay? 
Now, theorem of Bondal. As you see, we I try to give the definition of quivers and some properties. It's a, some cat, abelian category. And also we have a bounded category of uh, <coughs> X, another category. And theorem of Bondal uh, relates to these two uh, different area. If you <coughs> have your variety and assume that there exists a full strong exceptional collection on that variety, which is left due to a collection. Okay. If this is the case, uh, uh, then there exists a quiver with relation and equivalence of these categories, DBX and DQJ. I didn't give the definition of relations on quiver because we will not use uh, in the theorem. We will uh, apply uh, simple quivers without relations. So because of this reason, I did not mention, but theorem is in general, because of this reason, I wanted to give the general, uh, I want to state the general theorem. Uh, to understand how we will apply this theorem, uh, let me show uh, on an example how to give this equivalent, at least in the direction from dbx to dqj. Okay, <clears throat> let's continue with our example. Our variety was p2, and recall that od minus three, od minus two, od minus one uh, was a full exceptional collection uh, with a strong left dual, okay? <clears throat> now, if you take a sheaf, okay, from dbx, then uh, by the theorem of Bonda, we have a corresponding quiver, which is what? Which is the following quiver. <clears throat> we have three vertices, okay, which corresponds to our home, od to e, our home, T D minus two E and our home O D minus one E. Okay. As you see, they comes from uh, the left field collection in reverse order. Okay. And we have three vertices uh, between uh, consecutive uh, vertices. Okay. Uh, sorry, we have three arrows between two consecutive vertices and which in fact, comes from uh, dimension of uh, home TD minus two OD and home OD minus TD minus two. Again, the elements, consecutive elements in the left field collection. Okay. Question. Okay. Now, in the third part, I can mention main theorem and I can give the sketch of the proof. Okay. What is the main theorem in our work? The trichotomy, remember the definition and we had a conjecture saying that trichotomy exhaustive. And this Ulrich trichotomy holds for P2, P1 times P1, X3 and X4 with any given polarization. If you remember the uh, first remark, if you change the polarization, behavior of the uh, trichotomy, trichotomy uh, dramatically changes. Because of this reason, uh, polarization is important. And in theorem, uh, the result is polarization free. Okay. Uh, okay. Now let me give the proof of our main theorem. I will uh, give the proof for uh, P2 with arbitrary polarization. Okay. Quick uh, question. Yep. So X3 and X4 are CP2 blown up at three, four, yes. four, three, four points. Okay. Yes, 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 exactly. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, the, yeah it's an uh, important question because uh, sometimes it is uh, Del Pesos are given with degrees. So these are in my notation, which means uh, at blow up at three points and blow up at four points. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, as I told you, I will give the uh, proof for P2 
with arbitrary polarization, but uh, one can show the same result for the remaining three surfaces uh, following same steps, which I uh, will try to explain. Okay. First of all, <clears throat> let's start. We have P2 and we have a polarization, okay, OD, D is bigger than zero. If there is no leaf bundle, which means that the conjecture is false, then trichotomy holds. And why? Because if no leaf bundles, which means finitely many, so your P2 with OD is finite type, so trichotomy holds. Okay, and done. <clears throat> if we have a bundle, let's say we have in decomposable Udif bundle of rank R. Okay. If this is the case, then we can apply the theorem of Bondal because theorem of Bondal says that if you have a coherence shift, then of course, if your uh, variety uh, have some uh, strong full exceptional collection at the left dual, it, this is the case. In P2, we showed it is the case. We showed there exist such uh, collections. By applying Bondal's theorem, we have associated uh, quiver. Quiver with two vertices and three arrows. <clears throat> and also we have a representation, okay, uh, to this one, okay, with dimension vector A and B. But be careful that if you remember the construction on P2, we had a quiver with three vertices, right? Not uh, two vertices. Why now I am saying that two vertices? Because of the definition of Uri. If you remember the uh, characterization of Uri, we know that E is Uri if and only if all cohomologies of E minus I is zero for I change from one to dimension. Now dimension is two, which means that E minus uh, H and minus two H uh, and all cohomologies vanish. And another thing, now the polarization is D, H here D. So this means that by definition of URI, all cohomologies of E minus D and E minus two D zero. But if you look at the construction on the left, R home ODE means E minus T, cohomologies of E minus T. Okay, in all levels, but all of them zero by the definition. So it died, left uh, vertex dies. So we have only two vertices. So because of this reason, we have this quiver, quiver with two vertex and three arrows. Is that clear? Just because of the definition of Rudy Pan. Okay, another thing, as you see in the construction, there are home, okay? Which are in fact, not uh, <clears throat> one uh, vector space that, uh, <clears throat> uh, what was the word, I'm sorry. <clears throat> they are chain of, uh, yes, they are chain. But again, the properties of Uri pandas the cohomologies concentrate at first one because Uri bundles always are semi-stable. If you look at H zeros, they will vanish. In the case of uh, in the middle and in the right hand side, okay, because of semi-stability and also uh, Euler sequence and so on. And also H2 will vanish because of Serve duality and semi-stability and combining of some other properties. And which means that they will concentrate at uh, one point. Okay, so they are ordinary vertices. Okay, they are not chain. Because of this reason, we have this simple quiver. Okay, quiver with two vertex and three arrows. Okay. And another observation uh, about this quiver is uh, that which this quiver is hyperbolic quiver, which means that the proper sub diagram of this one is finite or affine type. What do I mean proper sub diagram? If you take your quiver 
if you remove one arrow, if the remaining one is finite or affine, okay, we call this hyperbolic. If it satisfies for all arrows, this property, they are called hyperbolic quivers. And since we know uh, finite and affine type quivers, sorry, diagrams, okay, uh, we can determine hyperbolic quivers, okay? In our uh, case- uh, yeah. son, I'm not sure if I understand hyperbolic, definition of hyperbolic. Quiver. Okay, let's- so let's, Take let's, one edge, edge from it. Let, let's look at the, our uh, example. Our example is this quiver, right? Two vertices, three arrows. Mm -hmm. Now we need to move one arrows. Let's move the above one. What do we have now? Two vertex, vertex, two arrows. Forget directions. So mm -hmm. we have a diagram, extended LinkedIn diagram with two vertex and two arrows, which is A1 hat. And we know that it is finite or I don't remember. Uh, it should be affine, I'm sorry. It, it is affine diagram. Because of this reason, it is hyperbolic quiver. And of course we do uh, this for all arrows, but in each cases we have a remaining one A1 hat which means that it is affine, which means that your original quiver is hyperbolic. Is that clear? Yeah, okay. Okay, and uh, if you are interested, uh, all finite and affine diagrams uh, are known and you can find in the book of uh, Cobb, which is infinite dimensional Lie algebra, okay? Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, after these observations, now, uh, if you have an indecomposable uh, Uri bundle, and then we have this associated uh, quiver, quiver with two vertex and three arrows. And this, as we explained, this quiver is hyperbolic quiver. Okay. Now let's analyze case by case. The first case, okay, the representation have Euler character, non -neg sorry, negative Euler characteristic. This is the case. If this is the case, then now I will apply some results from again Cobb, uh, but in a different paper, infinite root systems, representation of graphs and invariant theory. Okay, <clears throat> this is a results from infinite root systems. Okay, and uh, from there we know that since Q is hyperbolic, then and also Euler characteristic is negative then D, this D dimension vector should be sure root, which means home VV is one, okay? And then if you look at the N multiple of dimension vector for a positive one, it's, it is again sure root two, again from the uh, Cox paper, which means that, so if you look at representations of with uh, and the dimensional vector on this quiver, then the general element should be simple. Okay. Uh, now, the second step, we need to find an Uri bundle corresponds to such uh, dimension vector and the, but if you remember, direct sum of Uri bundle is again Uri. So we had an Uri E, so we can look at the N copies and some copies then it is Uri. And the quiver associated to this one should be same quiver with different dimension vector, but it should be ND because of the properties of cohomologies. Okay, <clears throat> so we have an Uri bundle, A plus uh, and uh, N direct sum of E and corresponds to this quiver with dimension vector ND. But we know that being Uri is an open condition from the definition. So the general element in representations with ND and D dimension vector corresponds to the map given modal to a simple Uri bundle. Okay, but simple means indecomposable. So what do we know? Now we have indecomposable Uri bundle. Okay. <clears throat> with exactly now uh, rank of this bundle is n times the rank of original E. Okay, 
So now we can uh, define the dimension of moduli space at this point, this simple Ulrich bundle, but the dimension measures with x1. Okay. If you remember the uh, definition of Euler characteristic, it was home minus x1. But home was one in that case because of shoe root. So x1 is one minus Euler characteristic of nd with nd, which means one minus n times Euler characteristic db. But when n goes to infinity, okay, since Euler characteristic is negative in this case, so the dimension goes to infinity, which means that by definition, x is already white. Is that clear? Okay. So this was the first case, but maybe we don't have any Ulrich bundle with negative Euler characteristic. Okay. We don't have, but let's say there exists one with Euler characteristic is zero. Okay. But if you compute Euler characteristic, we know the dimension vector, which is A and B. And also we know how to compute Euler characteristic with Euler form. If you remember the lemma, lemma. Okay. it was in that case, A squared plus B squared minus three AB, which is zero. But if you try to solve this one and not forgetting A and B dimensions, which means they are natural numbers. So we have no solution, which means that there is no such case. Okay. So now case three, let's say there exists no Ulrich bundle with <coughs> negative or zero Euler characteristic, but there exists one with positive Euler characteristic. Okay. Again, by the results from Cox paper, since Q is hyperbolic and Euler characteristic is zero, this should be real root. And if this is the case, Euler characteristic is not just positive, it's exactly one because Q is hyperbolic. Okay, so since these real roots that exist only one in the composable representation with this dimension vector. Again, uh, it's a property from the infinite uh, root system, which means that since A had a, this dimension vector, and this is the unique, which means that this Ulrich bundle E is the unique in the composable Ulrich bundle with this dimension vector. What does it mean? If we can show that there are just finite many such D, then we can say that X is finite type. Okay, so let's look at. In that, at this step, I will apply Balanson theorem. Okay, since I have no time to explain, but we have a theorem, okay. Uh, we have a spectral sequence, okay, which converts to E or in second quadrants, okay. And if you apply this theorem, okay, you will see that we have such a uh, short exact sequence containing E, your Uri bundle. Uh, Osman. Yep. That was the conjecture, uh, right? Yeah. Given any projective variety, does it uh, have an Ulrich bundle on it? So yes. here, for any projective space, there exists one with Euler correct. Is it? No, uh, am no, I no, missing no, something or no, I, I'm not? Please don't confuse two problems. Yes, you are right. We have a conjecture that uh, we haven't solved yet. We don't yeah. know existence. Mm -hmm. The problem in the existence case or non-existence case, non-existence case, which means that it is finite because there is no URI. If there exists URI bundle, then can we classify varieties up to this trick automaton? Okay, this is the problem. This problem doesn't answer uh, the existence conjecture. It, answer the second problem. Is that clear? If there exists a, a, an Uri bundle, then it that must be one with Euler characteristic zero. In case three, uh, positive Euler characteristic. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. After balancing, uh, tensor this one O minus two D, and then uh, take Euler characteristic of uh, short exact sequence. We know that it is additive, and also Euler characteristic of E minus two D zero because of the definition. Remember that E minus D and E minus two D has no cohomologies. Okay. So because of this reason, we have this equality. B times Euler characteristic of O minus T minus one, O minus T minus three, okay. By the way, this Euler characteristic is Euler characteristic of sheep, okay, not from the quiver. So we have, you know how to compute and we have this equation, A times D plus one is equal to B times D minus one. And also remember that this is the case, now the Euler characteristic of, uh, in the quiver sense, was one, but we know how to compute. It is a squared plus b squared minus three ab. So we have two equations. If you solve together, then you will see that there are only finite many solutions. Okay. In fact, there is only one solution in the case d equals two. If d is bigger than two, there is no solution, which means finite many solution. As a result, x is already finite in that case, because we observe that for any AB, there was unique Uri bundle. So we have only finite AB, which means that we have only finite many Uri bundle. So in the trichotomy language, which means that Uri finite. As a result, P2 for arbitrary polarization satisfies Uri trichotomy. In each case, it's one of the case, tame, wild, or finite. Okay, so this is the end of my talk. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, uh, Ersan. Let's give you a round of applause through our reactions, or if you want, you can. Um, any questions for Ersan? Any questions? If not, I will ask some questions, if you don't mind, Ersan. Yeah, of course you can ask. I think you will ask about quivers. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there is this result that any uh, projective variety can be seen as a quiver Grassmannian. No, no, no. Uh, to, to have this one, first of all, your variety should have a strong exceptional collection and it's very restrictive result. Because of this reason, in our theorem, we had uh, the the uh, result for P2, for P1 times P1, X3 and X4. In other Del Peso, there was a strong exceptional collections, but in that, these cases, we had another difficulties. But I mean, for some varieties, we have no such collections. So the Bondal- But I'm not talking about Bondal's result. I'm talking about uh, a result by Reinecke, for instance, he proves that any projective variety is a quiver Grassmannian. Okay. Um, what does what does it being Ulrich being an Ulrich bundle mean in terms of that correspondence? But I think uh, uh, maybe I, I, I'm asking the wrong question, or you do not have an answer for that. Yes, I, I I don't have this answer, uh, but. Even in Bondal correspondence, in the in the case of quiver representation, the reverse direction is very hard. I mean, for which representations you will have an Ulrich bundle? This is a very hard question. And in fact, in our paper, we didn't answer this one. We answered different questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, and the only place I heard about these Ulrich bundles before was in the realm of non-commutative algebras and geometry. And there they were talking about Clifford algebras and representations of Clifford algebras, but I don't really know, like I didn't really learn and understand too much. I was thinking maybe you know something about them? Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I know, uh much better in the geometry case. In commutative algebra, I'm trying to learn, but at this point, I have no answer for it. Thank you. And uh, one more question, maybe. 
that um, there is also these kind of trichotomy questions in, let's say, uh, the theory of finite dimensional algebras, representations of finite dimensional algebras, mm -hmm. um, like finite representation type, wild representation type, and tame representation type. Uh, does this trichotomy that you describe have any relations to? In fact, uh, the, the, this, this uh, trichotomy fr mimicking from this one, exactly, no. exactly from this one. Because there's earlier characteristic and everything going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is because of this uh, we have such conjecture. You're right. Uh, and do you have any like examples from higher dimensional uh, varieties? For higher dimension, as you see, uh, the computation in this case can be done because we had no relation because the corresponding quiver was hyperbolic. So mm. everything was easy without uh, relation. In higher dimension, even when you kill the uh, vertices, still you will have relation. And in relation case, uh, it's nightmare. We, oh. haven't, we haven't attacked, but maybe in future, um, uh, maybe we will. I don't know. OK. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? I, I have a question. So what was, uh, I mean, I might miss it, but uh, what are some examples of varieties that admits Uri bundle? Some uh, uh, real examples or some complicated? All, all, all hypersurfaces, for example, and curves, and Fano trifold of even index, and in Odin, in my thesis, I looked at odd index and in uh, there are examples with odd index for abelian surfaces and they are known cases and also del peso surfaces uh, they support. Uh, but here uh, I have a comment del peso with uh, polarization minus kx. When you change the polarization again, the result is not known. It's directly also depends on the your embedding. So yes, there are known results, something like I, I listed. Maybe there are more than that, but there is no general result. <clears throat> Just and on do they, your case. Do they also share some other common properties than uh... Uh, what do you mean common properties? Uh, common properties of varieties? No. In yeah, fact, uh, yeah. Well, in, in fact, in P2 case. Other than having only founders. In, in, in fact, in the sim in very simple case, P2, uh, which I gave, if you embed P2 as Veronese, there is only one indecomposable Uri fund, only one, just rank two, and it is tangent bundle. And if you embed with higher uh, variable uh, uh, polarization, then there are infinitely many uh, in decomposable bundles. So there is no uh, common properties of example because so, the definition directly depends on the embedding. So mm -hmm. the geometry affects very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank so did you. did you say hypersurfaces or hyperspaces? Uh, for hypersurfaces, hypers. Just a second. Time. So the the dimension is what I'm wondering because it uh, seems like everything is in real four. You know, in in, dim in dimension, the, there is no restriction. This is the case without restriction. Okay, I was just checking out your paper. Uh, and it seems like there are really many more examples. Yeah, yeah. Okay. quiver, which is really nice. The the nice to see how it works in the other quiver cases and and yeah, yeah. In, in 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 the we have a, a paper with same title with Embra and mm -hmm. we have there there are details of computation for the other case which I mentioned P one times P one and X three and X four yes right right. And it seems like XG and X4 cases more algebraically involved. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, thank you for the comment. 
Any other questions or comments? If not, let's say thank you again to Ushan. Oh. And uh, let's promote Oz Shauk's talk next week. He's going to talk about, I think his thesis work. Is that correct, Oz? Yeah, kind of. It's Please about um, mostly low dimensional topology, but it types algebraic geometry. Okay. Um, and we usually stop recording here.